What's up guys, my name is Jedith. With a new expansion on the horizon, it's the perfect time to start talking about Mythic Plus and what needs to happen to keep players interested, intrigued, and ultimately invested. This video is mostly just going to be me yapping for a few minutes, so feel free to put this um, on in the background while you're doing something else, but I hope some of this resonates with you, and if you agree or disagree, let me know in the comments. Also, there's a super secret reveal at the end of this video, so make sure you stick around and pay attention. All right, let's jump right into the first thing that needs to change in Mythic Plus. More exciting rewards are something I've been dying to see in Mythic Plus ever since I started running Keys, which was all the way back in Battle for Azeroth. It always seemed weird to me that in an infinitely scaling challenge mode, there was no tangible incentive to go higher than the arbitrarily set cutoff point. In previous expansions, that cutoff point was plus 15. That was when you got your achievement, your mount, and everything uh, M plus had to offer in terms of in-game rewards. The confusing thing about that threshold was that it was still obtainable by the players who didn't have any particular interest in Mythic Plus, but did it anyway just to get those rewards. There were no further out of reach carrot on a stick rewards for the players who were heavily invested in Mythic Plus and completed keys at the highest level. The only thing we had was a number associated to a rating system that came from an external third party website called Raider.io. Blizzard took note of this and eventually added a similar rating system into the game in which they had to work with Raider.io directly to make sure the number scale matched up and the two numbers could be referred to interchangeably. This was a great first step, but the actual rewards, the titles, and the mounts were still associated with mid-level scores. Sure, we got portals for completing plus 20 keys, but those are not prestige rewards. Those are convenience benefits. Nobody can see those portals on your character while you're standing AFK outside the auction house, and frankly, they're just not very impressive. In PvP, when you see someone with the elite transmog set, the gladiator mount, or the weapon illusion, it's a clear indication of that player's mastery of that game system. So here's what I'd want to see if Blizzard were to implement a new reward system. One, keep the rating system that's already in place. It's honestly a good base to work from, and we can build from it. It's a great way to set certain breakpoints and thresholds to give out rewards that can progressively get better and better. Two. Give granular transmog rewards as you go up in score. For example, the elite PvP transmog set unlocks groups of two pieces at specific ranks. Getting to 1800 rating gives you the final two pieces, which would be the head and shoulder slots to complete the elite PvP color variant of the current tier's appearance. Three, give M plus a seasonal mount, much like the seasonal PvP mount that people can work towards. We're not talking about the gladiator mount here. What I'm referring to is something equivalent to the vicious mounts. It's a bar you have to fill up to 100% by participating in ranked PvP matches above 1000 rating. This could be transferred to Mythic Plus by allowing key completion above a difficulty, probably whatever is rewarding aspect crests or whatever the equivalent in the war within would be, to contribute to that bar. And just like in PvP, if you fill the bar once, you can continue filling it multiple times for a saddle that can be used to buy mounts from previous seasons. And finally, there needs to be a one-step higher reward, whether it's a flashy mount or a sick transmog set, whatever it is, it needs to be awarded to players who are doing the highest level of keys possible in that season. You might say that Blizzard can't predict the capability of players, but I don't believe that to be true. We all kind of know or have a rough estimate where keys will end up at the end of a season. We have tools available that can show us how damage scales in keys and when mechanics become unavoidable one-shots. I'm certain Blizzard can extrapolate on scaling information they have to find that plus 30 to 32 would have been the breakpoint for this season. When a player starts their journey into the M plus world, there's a lot, and I mean a lot of learning, that happens during the keystone building process. You're becoming familiar with the dungeon layouts, the mechanics of the trash and bosses, and what things become larger threats as the key level scales up. On top of that, you're also doing your best to discover ways you can play your class and spec to its best advantage in that particular scenario. You and your teammates are all riding the struggle bus together, and at this point, mistakes mean a lot less. You might accidentally pull an extra pack of trash or have a full group wipe on one of the bosses, and that setback in time is more easily countered by you being above the dungeon's level or just simply playing better for the rest of the key. If it comes to the point where your group unfortunately doesn't time that plus six you are working on, having your keystone drop down to a plus five is a blessing. 
it's the game's way of saying, hey, it looks like you need a little more practice and another opportunity to learn. Now let's take a look at the opposite end of the field where players are involved in intense sweaty power sessions, trying to time a plus 30 key. To get that plus 30 key, they more than likely timed a plus 29 prior to that. That plus 29 was almost certainly incredibly difficult to time and came down to the wire. Unlike those earlier key levels I mentioned before, this is where one simple mistake from any one of the five party members can be enough to ruin all possibility of success. This looming weight on the player's shoulders is what inevitably scares them off from even trying a higher key that they might be a little intimidated by. When it's one or two mistakes resulting in the depletion of a key, rather than a handful, like what would happen in lower keys, it often isn't due to a lack of knowledge, it's lack of execution. Having one small silly thing go wrong in that plus 30 means you have to run it back on a plus 29 and hope to God another small silly mistake doesn't happen there, which further reduces your key to a plus 28. It's at this point, people get extremely unmotivated because they feel like they're being punished. Leading up to the MDI, players get access to the tournament realm. This is a private server where you can set up a character with all the best gear, craft a key exactly to your liking, and run it over and over without it depleting. This means your group can practice that one tricky pull at the start of the dungeon multiple times in succession without the key level dropping. This alone gets a ton of people to sign up to participate in the MDI, even if they don't actually plan to. Just to get access to this tournament realm, where their group can practice executing challenging things with their group, which they can then take that practice back over to the live realms and time those higher keys. This is a clear testament that players want to get better. They want the opportunity to improve, but when they're punished, instead of getting another chance, they give up. Let's also not forget that we as players are able to manually drop our key levels if we feel like we just aren't ready for what that particular key level has in store for us. Ultimately, I think key depletion shouldn't exist in the entire spectrum of key levels. But if Blizzard does want to hold on to that game function in some form, lower level depletion is the more acceptable way. Give the players the control. Don't punish them for wanting to practice. Plain and simple. When we start talking about affixes, things get a little unclear, at least for me. Affixes were initially put in place to make dungeons more challenging. They're meant to make it harder for your group to complete the dungeon within the set amount of time. While they definitely do succeed at that goal, they're kind of just um, annoyances and you don't feel accomplished for powering through them. On top of feeling unrewarding, they're also extremely unbalanced. There's specific weeks that come around in the rotation known as push weeks, and then there's other weeks where players simply just don't want to play the game because the set of affixes make the experience a miserable mess. Affixes like bursting, bolstering, and raging feel super punishing, and in some cases, work against you when you're trying to play in a way that the game mode wants you to play. I've seen a lot of people argue for having positive affixes or even kiss curse affixes, but in my opinion, having too many power benefits juicing up the player can lead to some out of control balancing issues. Although I will admit, it's super fun to just blast and destroy mobs and keys sometimes, but the way I'd like to see it pan out is like this. First of all, the dungeons should be balanced and tuned in a way where the actual timer matters more. As it currently stands, even though we're playing a timed challenge mode, the goal is less about completing the dungeon as fast as you possibly can, and it's more about simply surviving. I'd like to see a world where just timing the key as a plus one is the bare minimum. If you want to get the highest scores in the world, you need to figure out ways to plus two or even plus three the keystone. That straight up isn't possible in Mythic plus the way things are tuned now. There is no way in hell you'll see a group 3 chest a plus 30 Throne of the Tides. I could see this being done by having access to utility-based affixes, things that can help you time the key quicker, not by making you more powerful so you kill bosses faster, but by giving you ways to move around the map quicker. Maybe ways you can skip from one side to the other, or less frequent but highly defensive things that might allow you to pull larger than you normally would. What if your group was allowed to teleport directly back to the starting point of a dungeon, but you only had one charge of that ability so you had to plan in advance where you wanted to use it? And um, there's a lot of creative things that could work uh, that I'm sure would take some extra effort to implement because they're not really on the same track as the things we have now, but I think it would be really interesting to try. They just need to be unique things that require you to be a bit more creative with your routing and overall plan of attack rather than slowing you down or making you hit for a larger number. 
If Blizzard can make these changes a reality, or truthfully, even show that we're on the right path towards them, I really think Mythic Plus has a fighting chance to survive throughout the years. Now, about that secret reveal I told you about at the start of the video, well, would you believe me if I told you this entire video was generated by AI? I mean, all the thoughts are mine. I'm the one who selected these words to happen in this order, but the person speaking it? Nope. That was all a Jedith clone. Pretty interesting, right? Honestly, it's kind of scary, but hey, this is the future. Anyway, one last thing. If you're not already aware, I started a podcast. It's called the Warcraft Workshop Podcast. It's hosted by me, actually me, not the AI version of me, and evoker and mage extraordinaire Preheat. The goal of the podcast is to give you, the listeners, tangible and practical advice on how you can improve your gameplay and enjoy WoW more. There's a link down in the description if you want to throw us a sub over on that channel. We'd greatly appreciate it. All right, thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time. Peace.